Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fabulous to have you here, because we are working on a falchion, hopefully with a hamon. And so today, the first thing that we need to do is sort out the transition between the tang and the blade, and then reveal the hamon. Thank you for joining me, hope you enjoy. As you remember from yesterday, we left off with just the most stunning finish on the blade. This is a 3500 grit polished finish, and Alex has just done a killer job on that. Well done, great work. You'll also remember we might not even need that, but what I've done is I've got this on the drawing so that I could kind of just roughly line up where it is that our Bill Bunky file guide is gonna go. So we'll give that a tighten. Yeah. Double check we like how she sits. I think that'll work. Now we'll undo this. Pull off our blue tape. And now, with a little degrease, it's time for us to test doing a hamon with a 3500 grit finish. So we'll see how it works. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. If not, we make a beautiful 600 grit. This is a moment of truth. This is attempt number one at showing the etch using the ferric chloride acid, just the same way we etch with Damascus, except a lot less. Here, we're not trying to create highs and lows. We're just trying to create a difference in contrast. This is test one at 3500 grit. We're gonna do 30 seconds in, then we're gonna neutralize it, wash it off with water, and see if we can polish it. See if that'll bring out the Hamon. Are you ready? I'm ready. You can do the honors. Right, and into the bicarbonate of soda we go! Woo, did it look like something? Look at that dark edge, light spine. And now we lightly polish it and we see how it looks. Let's try the 3500 grit polishing cloth first. This is some sort of polishing cloth. It's really interesting stuff. Just slice that up. Here we go, let's see how this looks. So flipped over on the other side here, there seems to be some slight rust spot looking things. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try 2000 and see how that works. How did the 2000 grit go, Alex? Got rid of the corrosion, it just got rid of the hamon as well. So we gotta try something else here. <laughs> yep, no corrosion, no hamon. And so now what are we gonna do? In and out, etch, steel wool, yeah. etch steel wool. Yeah, so we just tried it with the 2000 grit. We got rid of the corrosion, but it was a bit of a hassle turning it over. So what we're going to try now is a method that I got some tips on from the wonderful guy S. Clark on Instagram. He makes some killer hormones mm -hmm. and he recommended you just submerge it in the ferric, take it out and polish it up with quadruple steel wool. So we're going to try okay. that. So we got it right here handy. We've got water, bicarbonate of soda. Scrub this, then back in the acid. Scrub, acid, scrub, acid, scrub, acid. Exactly. That's Sweet. Awesome. That looks beautiful. It does. Oh my goodness, look at those wavy lines. They're coming through incredibly. That authentic Japanese uh, exhaust sealant's just incredible. Here's how it looked after a few in and outs. It's got this weird section uh, right here, however, where there's light dark in the soft steel. So we might have to do a little more work to it. It certainly looks extremely nice on this side. Just stunning. I do not know how we're gonna fix that though. So the next step could be using a buffing compound to polish it up even further. So that's what Alex doing, Alex doing here. Uh, nah. So this is some of that Three and a half thousand grit again. And we're gonna see whether that smooths out the problem with that finish. No, I think it needs more etching. A little degreaser. Okay, let's try in the ferric. Now let's see what a little, a little bit of this will do. Not even neutralizing or cleaning it in between dippings. Now we'll try and neutralize it and we'll wipe it off with some water. Hello. So now there are no streaky bits inside the dark. That's nice. That's very good to see. It's all a lot darker than we finally wanted though. Okay, that's better than it was. It's got this really cool dark finish to it. 
So what you've just seen me do is I took what we had and I didn't like the contrast, it wasn't popping enough. I took some 2000 grit with some plain water, wet and dry, and I went over it all. I then took some of that 3500 grit polishing paper, went over that, and holy moly does the contrast look good. That is so, so beautiful. Holy moly. Where the acid has etched the unhardened 1095, it almost, it almost looks like there's some sort of wootsy like look to it. Obviously there isn't, but it's got this beautiful look to it, almost like a texture. What I've also done this morning is I took our guard and I have it fitting on the blade. So with a guard fit up, there we go, we'll show you. Look at that, that'll do nicely. Punched guard, it's a pretty nice fit too once that's hammered on there. With that done, it is now time for me to do the final engraving on the final piece, which I am unbelievably terrified about. It still took a bunch of time to make this second guard up and uh, my failure rate on the inlaying is still rather high, so wish me luck. I'm about to jump right in. One side done, the groove is in there. I have also raised up some little watchma watts. It's in there by taking the chisel and grooving it in. So there are some little teeth to work with like we've done on some earlier tests. We have done the undercut with the onglet groover. That is side one. It's now on to side number two. The groove is cut on the second side. I have annealed that bronze wire. It is now time to try and do the inlay. I'm going to work this last 10 centimeter portion. We're gonna go back around, around the other side and hopefully meet it together. Here we go. I'm pretty nervous right now because I'm not sure that this is going to bend over as it should. So this could affect us big time. Here we go for the bend. That's not bad actually. I think we might make it work. So we are now at the last two to three millimeters, about an eighth of an inch to go here. Now we need to get this to butt up nicely, which is gonna be a challenge. Man, I mean, I could try just snipping it and forming it in. I don't really know how else I would do this. It's probably the way to go. Where do we cut it though? Here? Oh boy, fingers crossed. Oh boy, oh boy, fingers crossed. I think it worked. So with that hammered in there, I am now gonna go to the grinder. Ooh, maybe with 180 grit. And we're gonna grind it down so that there are no dents in the steel and hopefully it all looks good and there are no gaps even at the join, the mate up between both ends of the wire. With the inlay done, and might I say, almost no trace of a seam whatsoever, this is really getting very exciting. I am excited because this guard is gonna get hand sanded up nicely. It already looks awesome and I think it's gonna look even better. I am very excited to have 
fiddled about with another technique, a whole new thing, a whole new little uh, dip of the toes into a completely different avenue of metal work. I'm also thrilled to have brought you along for the day. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I can't wait to see you tomorrow on the next episode. This is going to the side. We uh, have a fun little collaboration coming up, which I hope, no, I know you will enjoy. Bye-bye.